while I'm here, because I want to be consistent and um, I want to stick to what I said, I'm going to make a short episode. This is going to be a summary about The Bear episode one because I rewatched it just so that I could talk to you guys about it because um, it's great. It's it's just, it's really great. And um, I'm gonna tell you about what happens. So basically, The Bear is a show about um, two characters. Well, it's about a restaurant. It's about a restaurant that it's a an Italian deli sandwich shop in Chicago. And um, there's, it's a family owned restaurant. The brother who owns the restaurant dies. It leaves the restaurant to his brother. <clears throat> his brother is a master chef and leaves being an awesome chef, I think in New York, I think he was at Chez Panisse, which is this really great, like it's like one of the best restaurants in like the world. Um, and he comes to Chicago to run this little haunt, this little rinky dink sandwich shop deli in Chicago. So when he gets there, everything's fucked up. Okay, like they don't have any like, <clears throat> none of the employees there, I don't think they've taken the serve safe course. They haven't been to culinary school. They don't really know anything about like recipes or ingredients. The shit that's on the menu is like really old and like there's no, it is not a fine dining experience in any like way, shape or form. It is just a sandwich shop. It would be like if I just fucking bought some bread and some bologna and I was like, I'm selling sandwiches now. And then you guys were like, I'm gonna buy her shit. And then that's what happened. <laughs> like that's, that's kind of as far as it went, but it's like a family owned business because there's a bunch of shops in real life that are like this. Not everywhere is like a five star place. Some places are just like family owned, rinky dink. It is what it is. This is one of them. So Sid um, is staging. Staging is this a uh, thing that happens in the restaurant, the hospitality business, where you go, if you want to work in a restaurant in any position, you go in and you just like watch how it all goes for a day. You participate a little bit to see if it's a good fit, to see if the chef's like you, to see if the front of house manager's like you, to see if the other people there get along with you, to see, to see if you can like, you know, hold your own weight and contribute in some fucking way. Just because like the turnover in the hospitality industry is very high, um, most of the time like your stodging situation is gonna go pretty well and you're gonna like get the, the gig or whatever, but <sighs> at higher, excuse me, at higher ending, at higher end places, it might be a little bit harder to get in and have what it takes because the caliber of people, like they're still, culinary school is a real thing. Being chef, trained as a chef is a real thing. Having, you know, fine dining experience and understanding important things about hospitality are real. And the longer that you work in the industry, the more of this that you will personally experience. And the more efficient and effective you will become in your job. Because it's a real job. You can make an entire living in America simply working in hospitality. Like a career, like I'm, I mean, you can make like $100,000 a year just working in hospitality. Not having two jobs, just having one. But being really good at your job, that can be a thing. If you want it to be. It's sort of up to you, right? Like you can do the work, you can um, learn things that you, you know, need to learn to make yourself a better, whatever, chef, server, manager, wherever you lie on the spectrum. Things for you can become great and you can make a really good living. So the show is kind of about people who do this, but there's a lot of drama. So, the way that the brother who dies and leaves the restaurant to the, sh the chef, the new chef, 
Jeremy Allen White, I can't remember the name of his character in the, the show, but he was not doing a very good job of keeping the restaurant afloat. So like there's a bunch of bills that aren't paid. There's like deliveries that are coming in where there's like not enough shit that was ordered. Like there's a bunch of problems and he he's come into the restaurant with a bunch of fucking problems that he has to solve. So it, it's not like there was some list of like, I need to fix this, 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 and you just go down the list and then start executing shit. It's like coming up as it on the fly. So they're like a sandwich shop. He needs a certain amount of beef. I think it's like a hundred pounds for the day or something. The delivery guy comes, he's only got 20 pounds of beef. If he needs a hundred pounds and he only has 20, that's an 80 pound difference that in terms of what they're expected to sell for the day, that's a really big problem. He needs more beef. Uh, the problem is there's no money. So the delivery dude's like, you only paid for 20 pounds. This is all I'm giving you. So he has to like call around and figure out how to get more beef. Um, and he, there's a whole thing because there's the price is, is a factor here. Bone in beef is cheaper than having the bone extracted because that's a separate process that costs money. So it's more expensive to have boneless meat than have bone in meat. So what he does is he buys a bunch of like bone, I guess he buys like 80 pounds of bone in meat by calling around and getting some favors and that meat takes longer to prep. Um, so the braising process for that, I think is an extra two or three hours. So he ends up buying that goat, he has to call around to get the 80 pounds and he has to drive out to go get the 80 pounds of meat, bring it back and that like for three hours, he's like doing the whole process of preparing this meat so that like the sandwich shop can continue to run. And this is just day one, episode one. And remember, Sid is here staging. Now, Sid, who is like Aoi Dabiri in this case, uh, she has been to culinary school. She actually is very familiar with uh, Jeremy as a chef in New York and how big of a chef he was. So she knows his resume, she knows his capabilities. They're all familiar with all of this. And like, she's like, why the fuck are you here? He's, it would be like, if you saw Sam Altman and he was like working at FedEx or something, you'd be like, why, why? There's many reasons though, cause like there's a bunch of great people in the world and you never know where they will be or why. There's always reason, always reason. Anyway, so she's like, why are you here? Um, and he's like, I'm making sandwiches. And <laughs> he just keeps going. But the, 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 I think the episode is really just about watching how broken the restaurant is, right? Like they do, fi so there's just a couple concepts that are introduced that I think are useful to know about. There's something called family meal. So in restaurants, family meal is this idea where like the people who are working in the restaurant are probably like, they have a whole life outside of the restaurant, but sometimes because you're opening or you're closing, so you're coming in really early or you're leaving really late, you don't actually have time to prepare meals at your own home. So either before the shift or as the shift is ending, there's a family meal where the chef will make food for the employees, all of the employees, and it's free so that everyone can either go home and go to sleep fed or start their shift with food in their belly. So they just make a bunch of food for all the people who are working the shift to eat and then they eat it. <laughs> so in this episode, we are introduced to, I think Sid is in charge of family meal. So she's like, yeah, what are we gonna have? We're like, spaghetti, we're gonna have spaghetti again or something. And we're, we're taking the spaghetti off the menu. This is bullshit. Nobody eats this shit. This is awful. Usually that's how it is. It's usually it's like some poultry that's like that's about to go bad or like something they order too much of or like sometimes it'll be pizza because it's just like super easy and cheap to make and fast, right? Less of a mess, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, we're introduced to all these like macro culinary concepts it's so the episode is not really about diving deep into any one particular character though i feel like it does like lean heavily on the brother who's dead and the idea the concept of the bear 
So the show is called The Bear because like Jeremy Ellen White, let me have to figure out the name of this character because I'm totally giving you guys, like I'm talking about this shit as though like he doesn't have a real name and it's like, dude, he definitely does. Um, bro, I have 500 tabs up. That's crazy. Um, Okay, so Carmi is the name of the head chef played by Jeremy Allen White. And so Carmi, um, Carmi is facing a bear. It, it's kind of like anxiety, like an anxiety is Carmi's bear. And so the show starts with Carmi literally like approaching a box with a bear in it. And he's like, I'm gonna let the bear out, I'm gonna let the bear out. And I think it's more about like him letting it like, uh, letting go of his inhibitions and being free to just do whatever the fuck he wants. But <laughs> there's all these constraints, right? Because like, he can't just do whatever he wants. He has to keep the restaurant afloat. He's still trying to be like a really good family member because we start to see like his sister kind of like shows up to the restaurant because I guess she's a part owner of it, but she wants to sell it. He doesn't want to sell it. So he has to like keep that afloat in some way. There's all this shit like going on and it's all happening at the same time. So he can't really get the anxiety off of his chest. So you start to see him having like panic attacks. He's like waking up in the middle of the night. Pop. He's like smoking cigarettes all the time. Um, and that's kind of his way of like moving through. It's kind of like how I come on this channel and just fucking spew my feelings because like that's my way of getting through. I think it's more effective than just like chain smoking cigarettes, right? We all have our own ways, but as a person who's been through a lot of therapy, I could say that this is more effective and more, it's been, it's been more beneficial for me to do this than to do other things. So this would be like my advice to you, like why I would start a YouTube channel as opposed to maybe doing something else, simply because like getting, sharing your feelings with the world and being able to open honest conversations about them is nice. Even if sometimes it's not popular, if it's not clear, my conversations are continuously not popular. <laughs> Not popular might be my fucking middle name. Middle name Olivia. <laughs> non popular opinions. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's kind of the bear. That's episode one. There's a lot of other things that happen. This is my like push to you to go watch it. I think you should. Uh, season two, season three is actually coming out. I have only unpacked season one and I haven't even thoroughly unpacked it. There's no like, I didn't even like really unpack major themes because there's a lot of them. All I did was kind of give you a very general like overview of what the fucking show is even about. <clears throat> and nothing has really happened yet. So in season two, I'll try to do better. We gotta start somewhere. 